Hello friends, welcome back for, I guess, the third part of this Let's Build series. If you haven't watched the previous two, they were about building your rocket platform and about building your rocket exteriors in Spaced Out. This third one is going to be all about putting those things to use and kind of like completing all the rockets and building their interiors so that we can have like a full fleshed out picture of basically how to build every single type of rocket. So rocket platforms here, which we've covered. Um, if you haven't watched that video, you're definitely going to want to check that out. And rocket exteriors, this is one of them that we're going to be starting with in this video. If you haven't watched the exteriors video to talk about how to build all those, which I'm not going to go into too much detail in this one, you can check it out here. All right, so before we get started, let's head over to our requirements section like we typically do to talk about the supplies that you're going to need for all these types of rockets. All right, back here in the requirements section. Just going to mention it again, make sure that you're aware of the requirements of the other two videos that kind of precede this because those supplies are still very important here. I'm just going to be mentioning the new ones that we haven't mentioned yet because they're only useful on the inside. So first of all, in addition to those, is you're going to need something to shield your duplicates from radiation while they're in the rocket, so I'd recommend taking lead. You can find that in the oil biome on the second asteroid you should be getting to. The next thing is going to be a way for your duplicates to consistently breathe. So I'm going to recommend taking algae. If you don't have access to that, then rust or salt is a good backup. Third, uh, I would recommend taking water. And this is going to sound silly, but having a good amount of water when you're colonizing a planet is pretty important so that you can create your water lock and get settled in there and get your oxygen flowing in there early. Also, lastly, you need food for your duplicates while you're out there, so I'm going to recommend berry sludge. Berry sludge is definitely a really good food uh, for space travel because it never goes bad. And finally, the most important ingredient, this robot arm. And this one, exactly. Not any robot arm. Okay, here's the first rocket you will most likely launch in a spaced out run. This first rocket is going to be to gather databanks out in space. Uh, this is what the exterior looks like, and I think I'm going to try to launch each one of these rockets just to kind of prove the viability of duplicants living out there for a while. Uh, so yeah, this is what it looks like on the outside. Let's talk about what it should look like on the inside. So just going to view the interior. It's just going to start off like something like this with a small capsule. Uh, one of the first things to remember is that it will start with the rocket control station, but you can move this. Um, you need it in order to fly the rocket but uh, you can move it out of the way if there's a better place to put this to save some room. So, I want to do that, uh, mostly because there's some other stuff that kind of demands this real estate. So, when your duplicants are out in space, you need to think about four things that they're going to constantly need. Number one is they need some kind of oxygen source so they can breathe out here. So it's going to be something like this, like an oxygen diffuser. I'm going to place this here, and by the way, uh, really tight uh super specific builds are like harder they were harder for me to follow as a newer player so i'm going to try to be as straightforward as i can with these but the problem with these little capsules is there's only so much you can build in here and i'm also not going to cover exploits like being able to destroy this and build on the outside um you can do that but we're just gonna do it as they intended here so yeah apologies for the tightness of some of these builds you don't have to do it exactly this way, but you do need to solve the same problems that I'm solving. So, anyway, I just thought I would mention that. Okay, so we need oxygen for one. For two, we need a food source. So, I'm going to put down a refrigerator. And the food source that I talked about was berry sludge, but the refrigerator is just so we can get our duplicates to carry the food in here. Third, we need some way to ventilate this area so that my duplicate isn't just swimming in its own carbon dioxide by the time... Uh, they get to their destination or they just suffocate so they can't breathe. So I'm going to put a mini gas pump here down at the bottom. And I'm just going to stand it up like that. This is not going to be the greatest or most efficient way to pump out your gas, by the way. I just want to make sure that this is fully breathable all the time. So we will waste a little bit of oxygen with this setup. So just getting out ahead of those comments before I get them. <laughs> all right, so... In order to make sure we're only pumping out carbon dioxide, though, I want to place a gas element sensor for this. And the gas element sensor is just going to be hooked up to a few things of automation, so a knot gate like that. And a... Actually, I don't even know if I'm going to have the space for this. Let me try to move this over. Uh, 
We'll get to that in just a second as a duplicate needs to come in here and destroy this because I'm on sandbox. And if I'm ever on like the instant build or instant destroy mode, um, it seems like the game just crashes all the time. So <laughs> I might have to wait for duplicates to come in here and help me every once in a while. All right, so the uh, automation for this, I'm just going to hook it up like this. So a not gate first and then a filter gate second. Like that. Uh, this is going to basically be set up so that if there is ever anything that's not oxygen sitting down here for long enough, it's really just going to be carbon dioxide, or it could be chlorine if you brought the other full, uh, oxygen source, which is the rust-based oxygen. Um, it'll turn on this pump. It'll pump out roughly half carbon dioxide and half oxygen. Um, it's not, like I mentioned, it's not great. It is a little bit of a waste of oxygen, but I would much rather have this area be clear because we will need to produce data banks down on the bottom of this rocket. One thing that's kind of a nice to have, this is not a requirement by any means, but it's nice to have a wall toilet in here. And I say it's nice to have because it is okay for your duplicate to just <laughs> pee all over the floor, I guess. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't really hurt anything. They'll just need to mop it up every once in a while, but I'm just going to put it in here just because we can fit it in a really tight setup. So yeah. Oh, by the way, the settings on this, I want us to choose oxygen because it's going to be going into a not gate. So if I'm detecting something other than oxygen, it's going to send a green signal. Then my filter gate, I'm going to set up for like, I don't know, 60 seconds. I want to prove to make sure that this is actually soaking in carbon dioxide before I start to turn my pump on. So yeah, those are the settings for that. Okay, we still need to be able to fly this thing. So I need to build another level. I'm going to build a ladder right here and then uh, some mesh tiles right there, just to promote some circulation of air. Now we can put our rocket control station there, and I'll just kind of plop it on there. And we also need to shield ourselves from radiation, like I mentioned, so anywhere that you can fit any lead tiles at the top would be nice, so I'm just gonna do it like that. Lastly, uh, we need supplies if we're ever going to run a mission like this, and you might notice that I haven't put in the station to create databanks yet, and that's because uh, we don't have the space for it. We're going to have to request some items, and then we're going to have to delete the stuff that requested those items so we can actually fit that other station. This, unfortunately, the very first rocket is going to be the one that, like, is the most space intensive. So, yeah, I'm trying to just work around that restriction. But whenever you're flying, we want to track a few resources to make sure that we always have it. So algae is definitely one if that's going to be our oxygen source so that we know how much we have in case we're running low. We also want to track berry sludge so that we know we have food. And for this rocket, the data banks that you produce are gonna require plastic, so I wanna make sure that I have that too. Now the way we're gonna get stuff in here, and this is only gonna be for one duplicate, keep in mind. Um, I don't need a lot of berry sludge. I'm just gonna ask for this much. My duplicate should bring it in here in just a second. And then I'm gonna need a storage bin to ask for the uh, plastic and the algae, but I want to do those individually and not too much. So I'm going to say like 3,000 kilograms of algae ought to keep me good for a long time for oxygen for one duplicate. So they should be bringing it out here as I pause the game for some reason. So once they bring out the algae, you're going to want to change this so that they start bringing out plastic. Let me make sure I actually do have algae in my colony. Uh, yeah, they're bringing it. I think we should be good. There we go. Then once these both get filled up, so like the uh, berry sludge is filled up, as long as you don't have anything else asking for these supplies, like to be swept somewhere or taken somewhere, you can just deconstruct these two things and they'll just sit on the ground. I at least know that I have the supplies here. Oh, I can't do this yet. I need to ask for plastic. At least you'll know you have the supplies in the rocket with you and that's really all you need. So. I have 40,000 calories worth of berry sludge that's going to keep a duplicate alive for a long time if they need to stay out there for a long time. And now I'm going to ask for the plastic, and once they bring the plastic, we can kind of finish this up. Here we go. A couple more. Thank you, Meep. Alright, now we can deconstruct this to get it out of the way, and now we know we have all the supplies we're going to need to run this mission for quite a long time. There's still a couple other things we need to do though, uh, one of which is we forgot to hook up our wall toilet water, so we need to do that. The wall toilet just needs to be hooked up like so. I like to just kind of snake it around because this will also offer some cooling for a little while, and we might as well take advantage of that while we have it. So 
I need to make sure that I am running a pipe of water up here to fill up uh, anything that's going to be requesting water in my rocket, so I'll just kind of run it up there like this. There. We're also going to need to make sure that we build the station that's going to allow us to actually build data banks, so let's do that. It does require plastic, so theoretically you could get this going before you took off, but we also haven't hooked up power yet, and I want to make sure that we do that. Let's also hook up our ventilation, because we haven't done that either. Alright, stations, orbital, data collection lab is what you want to build for this. I'm going to go ahead and drop that there. And then we need power. Uh, you want to make sure that you have the research for this, and I do recommend this very early in my walkthrough, but you need a power outlet fitting that you can kind of just stick in the wall like that. And then you can connect up to the batteries that are on the outside of your rocket. So there, now everything is powered. If you look on the outside of our rocket, our battery and two solar panels are gaining energy from the sun. You can add a third uh, solar panel here if you really want to. Um, you're not really going to use that much energy, I don't think, because the stuff that's in here really does not use a ton. So, up to you. I only left two because this is going to be the same design that we're going to use for our artifact uh, rocket here in just a bit. So, we'll get there. Okay. Now, it looks like we're pretty much ready to launch. So, all we need to do is assign a duplicate and we're going to send them out and just kind of prove that they can live in space and do this job for a while. So, let's change our crew. Stinky, sure. Just like in the other video, let's see if he takes a horrible route and goes through this door before he gets in the rocket. Uh, oh, I need to choose a destination. So for destination for your databanks, I just choose a tile that's like right next to where I take off. And then uh, that's pretty much it. So yeah, we'll get them launched as soon as they get up here. I don't know why Stinky's just sitting there. Oh, I have to tell it to launch first. Hey, he took the bad route again. Yay. Once they're inside here, um, I like to make them take off their suits. So I'm just going to hit unequip suit while he's in here so that he's not going to have to constantly ask for uh, oxygen when he's already inside his suit. Uh, he'll just be able to breathe the natural environment. Finally, we want to have him make databanks forever because that's kind of his job while he's out here. So there you go. He can use the bathroom. He has food. He has a way to breathe, and he has a job to do while he's out here. So there's your databank rocket kind of on the inside. We'll leave Stinky out here. I'm going to go back and replace it with an, another rocket of the same type that's going to be for shipping. Uh, so we're going to build that rocket out next. All right, before we get started on the next rocket, there's a couple of housekeeping things that I wanted to mention. One of which is uh, when your duplicates are out here doing their thing in space. Oh, why do you have a suit on? All right, whatever. Uh, when they're doing their thing out here in space, their morale is going to be much, much lower than when they're back at your home base. So you will want to make sure to scrub all your duplicates that are going to be sent out on these space missions before they go. Um, so I've scrubbed, it looks like everybody but May. I don't know why I miss May. Uh, oh, just doing it right now. Yeah, so you will want to scrub everybody before they go, and then you can just reassign when they're out there. So skill scrubbers, very underrated and spaced out for this reason because the things that provide morale are going to be radically different. Uh, there was something else I was going to mention, but now I don't remember, so maybe we'll get back to it. Okay, anyway, this is the shipping rocket. Oh, pff, that explains what I was going to be doing. Uh, rename your rocket so that you know which is which. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on. So this is going to be like my data bank rocket that Stinky is already in and uh, working in, so there you go. Let's rename the rocket that we're about to send right now. Uh, this is the shipping rocket. So yeah, uh, I hate that it does this. It like will toggle the building off after you rename it. I don't get that. But anyway, this is the shipping rocket. Um, same design as last time. Again, you can add a third panel here if you really want to, but just for the sake of it being very consistent with the next rocket we're going to talk about, I'm just going to leave two and you should be totally fine. I also kind of pre-built this one out a little bit because it's going to look really similar to the other one. So here's the other one. There you go. Looks pretty much exactly the same, except it does not have the uh, data bank creator machine thingy, orbital data collection lab. Um, instead, we're going to use this space a little bit differently, and that's because when it's shipping, um, we're going to want to send stuff back and forth between asteroids. So. I mentioned this a little bit in the other video, but if I needed to ship stuff back and forth between this asteroid, which is really common, uh, you can just 
keep basically an infinite amount of supplies inside the rocket if you just move it like any other piece of debris. So let's just put that in. For this automatic dispenser, you do not need to power it. It'll still work without it, so you can just kind of leave it like that. And then I'm just going to set it to anything that I tell my duplicants to sweep. And this is, once again, I kind of give this PSA a lot. Make sure that you don't have anything else that is requesting any swept items. Otherwise, you're going to be competing with yourself over where to take stuff. But let's say, for the sake of example, um, on other planets, I would probably ship everything that I wanted to have taken. Maybe like right here. And then my duplicants wouldn't have to go very far to load it into the rocket. So let's just pretend I did that. Let me just grab, I don't know, this stuff. And we'll just say, yes, we want to ship this stuff to another asteroid. But we also need to track our typical resources that we want. We don't need plastic here. We just need algae and we need our berry sludge. There. Now we can have a bin that just perpetually requests one of these two things. So like you could perpetually request your um, algae in this one. So if they find any algae, just kind of bring it here. You can just take the same amount. And in this rocket, I would normally send two duplicates um, just so they can help with the shipping tasks once they get, once they get there. Um, you don't have to take two. I will only send one just so that we don't run out of duplicates with how many rockets we're going to be sending. Like one of the colonization rockets, I would send eight. I'm not going to send eight in the video, but we'll build it for eight of them. All right, the last one is we want a refrigerator, and I'd really like to not have to deconstruct this. And the place that I want to put it is right here. So I'm just going to move this power outlet fitting to the other side and just connect this back up to power. Then we can destroy all this stuff because we don't need to power our refrigerator if it's going to be for berry sludge. It'll last forever. I'm just kind of put a tile here, a refrigerator. And since you're in a shipping rocket too, there's not an exact amount of food you want to take here because sometimes you want to ship food. Um, but just because it's only going to be for the duplicates that are going to be living in here and the shipping distances are kind of short, again, we can just do like 10 kilograms. We don't need a lot. So, once they get up here and they fill up the bin with uh, algae, and when they bring the food, we'll be ready to go. Uh, why don't we have lead showing up here? That was weird. So yeah, that, they're basically just shipping all the stuff we're going to need. Nothing special. But we need to make sure that we have pilots for this too. So, I guess we'll just go in alphabetical order. Um, Abe, you're going to be the pilot for this one. We're just going to pretend that we're taking a second duplicate. And... Uh, I mean, there's plenty here for both of them. I don't even know if we have any more algae on our base. Let me check. Algae. Nope. We just need to make more. <laughs> we'll just pretend that we had it. If you didn't, um, you're going to have to switch to a different type or you're going to have to go mining for more. Whoops. What am I doing? There we go. Just kind of painted in my shipping area like that. There. My duplicates will dig all this out. So, yeah. As soon as we get the algae in here, we'll send Abe on his way. We'll at least just make sure that he's assigned as a crew member. There we go. Destination for this. Um, we are... Let's just pretend like we're shipping to this planet. I haven't actually landed on it in this game because this is just a debug game. So, we'll just pretend that we're going here to, sh to pick stuff up from this uh, asteroid. Because that's going to be the most common thing we'll be doing with that one. So, uh, almost there. All my duplicants got their skill scrubs, so they're going to be a lot slower at this than before. But that should pretty much do it. All right, let's launch this one. Whoops. All right, Abe, get out there. Let's go. All right. That should pretty much do it for the shipping rocket. When I get to wherever I want to go, remember to take their suits off, by the way. Whenever I get to where I want to go, I'm just going to have this still request stuff for sweep. Might want to turn it off while you're in flight to make sure that if there's jobs going on when you first get there that are involved sweeping, that they don't just take everything here when you might not want them to. So once they get there, I'll just set it back to being swept for everything. And again, ideally, I would ship everything very near uh, where it was going to be loaded into the rocket. So yeah, that'll pretty much cover it for the shipping rocket. Let's take a look at a really simple like artifact gathering rocket. Okay, here's our artifact rocket, already named as such, so we should be good to just quickly build this one. This one is extremely similar to the previous ones, uh, just, you know, just need to add a couple of buildings here and we should be good. So, let me add a refrigerator, 
Let me add our storage bin. All we need to do is fill it up with algae and with uh, food, obviously. Oh, I don't have my sandbox tools on. Oh well, I guess duplicates will get here and do it in just a second. But uh, all this is going to be for is if you have a... Well, one of our directives, that is, when you're playing the game, is to get at least 10 unique space artifacts. So here you go. And this is one of the more simple ways to do it, like I talked about in the previous video. It's easiest if you can just go to the sites that are nearest to where you're launching your rocket from. So if I was on this asteroid, I could probably fly out and grab this one and get back. Um, so you could do that from a bunch of different places. You could also do it with like your exploration rocket that we're going to talk about a little bit later, but this one's just meant to be really simple. So yeah, same thing as before. Let's just put in our berry sludge. Let's get our algae. Uh, there we go. We'll get those requested. Oh, we don't need that much. We're only going to be taking one duplicate here. So don't need a, a tremendous amount of either one. Just three tons of algae. Uh, 10 kilograms of berry sludge and we should be good. Let me assign somebody to be our pilot and then we'll get him out of here. Meanwhile, Stinky's still up here in the databank rocket. You can see our values here. He's used up about 200 kilograms of algae, about 300 of plastic, and only about one eighth of his food so far. The shipping rocket is just chilling outside the planet that we were going to land on if we had been able to, but yeah, uh, Abe's just chilling out there in his rocket too, so just kind of proving out the viability of living in these rockets for quite a while. All right, do you guys... Man, you guys are so slow. Let's do this just to help our, our future ones. I'm just going to paint it all right here, and then we'll have them dig it out, and then that'll get up to here a little bit quicker than usual. All right. Let's just set a destination really quickly. So, um, again, almost every... Well, pretty much every area... In fact, is it literally every area? Uh, should have an artifact at it, so you can just kind of fly there and fly back. And it'll be transported in this module right here, which I talked about in the external... Or, sorry, exterior video about uh, space travel, so... Yeah. Alright, I'm, I'm getting pretty tired of waiting here. They are being very slow. Let's just go ahead and assign somebody and launch this. Uh, looks like we have Ada. And launch. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the artifact rocket. I guess just for the satisfaction of getting it to blast off here, we'll just wait until Ada decides to show up. Thank you for your speed in getting here. I need to not have these doors here. It's just taking them so much longer to get in and out. All right, what are we waiting for? Come on, let's get up there. Yep, good job. Oh, pff. oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Ada is also afraid of the dark. Let's give her a light. Actually, I don't know if I have all the materials here for this, so that'll be interesting. Uh, whatever. Ada can just have bad sleep. Okay, so we've got three of our rockets down. Let's get the next one, which is going to be our colonization rocket. And we're going to have to build it over on the other platform. Just going to be built right here out of steam. So let me get the exterior built really quickly, and then we'll build the interior. This one's going to be the one where we go with uh, eight duplicates, so it's going to be pretty large. All right, here's our colonization rocket. I'm just going to call this colonization rocket one. But as you're colonizing, you're going to take different numbers of duplicates and go different distances. I like to start out with a steam engine because it's the most simple one and has very plentiful resources for it. Uh, it's just water, basically. So if you have a good amount of water, actually, this is really not even that much water if you think about it, 150 kilograms and it settles at like a thousand kilograms per tile. So almost nothing. Uh, very good engine, and it should take you pretty far, because this can travel 10 tiles. If you really wanted to, you could use that to travel all the way out here. Only downside is that it's going to be kind of slow, and if you need to turn around at, at any point or go somewhere else, it's not the greatest for that, so this is at minimum I will use this to settle on this asteroid, which is like the metal asteroid is what I call it. I think it's called like the irradiated forest asteroid or something like that. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Anyway, when I go to that one, I will be taking a lot of duplicates with me. So this first setup for this colonization rocket is going to be explicitly for eight duplicates to get them there as safely as possible and also to kind of live out of for a little bit because I will want my duplicates to have a safe place to be while they're starting the colonization. So let's start this out. All right, so the idea with this is this is much bigger than the other ones that we've been working with, so there's a lot more to fit in here. We could technically fit 10 duplicates, but I only want to take 8. 10 feels like too much. So I'm first of all just going to remove that, which we can always do. 
Then I'm going to start out with our typical stuff we would do. So I'm going to put a wall toilet in. Uh, we're also going to need a couple of other things, but I kind of want to work one side to the other. For the wall toilet this time, we're going to take a liquid reservoir with us and fill it up with water. And the reason why is because when you get there, you're going to need to make some kind of water lock like this. Whoa, there's like steam and all kinds of junk out here. I think it was ice melting. But uh, there's gonna you're going to need to create a water lock so that you can keep all the oxygen that you're creating on your new planet inside your base. So we're going to want to take some water there and at least enough to fill that up. So I'm going to build a water tank right next to it or liquid reservoir, whatever. Then after that, we could probably put our uh, control station down. So we'll put that there. And the idea with taking this many duplicates is you could just like cram them all in here and not care that much about it. Uh, while they're working, I would rather have them to be a little bit more specked out than normal. So I'd rather try to keep their morale up as much as I can. And this is big enough that we could get a great haul in here for eight duplicates. So let's build that out. Just going to build something like this. And then I'm going to put a door on this end to denote the room. So the size of the room is quite a few tiles. We're going to use up a bunch more uh, for the ceiling, like when we're going to be putting lead on it. So we might as well do that to protect our duplicates from radiation. This rocket's a little bit worse at protecting from radiation than the other one, but if you add that layer of lead, it's okay, I would say. All right, we need a way to actually reach up there. So just one ladder, you can just put it right there. Then this rocket, we're gonna need to ship a whole bunch of supplies with it because if my duplicates are gonna be living out of here um, and they're gonna be settling on a new place, they might need all kinds of materials that I don't wanna have to come back for if I don't have to. So while I'm loading it up, I'll just put a handful of automatic dispensers down like that. Just to make sure that all my duplicates can load this as quickly as possible. Uh, I'll just kind of put one here for right now, just to demonstrate the point. But anything I would be taking would be right here. And a lot of times that would include the things that we uh, absolutely need in order to breathe while we're in the rocket. Plus generate oxygen once we get to the place that we're going. So I would take quite a bit of algae with me, so we can just paint some in here and act as if uh, the duplicates are ready to take this and load it in there. So we'll have them mine that out. We will request it on sweep only so that they bring a whole bunch of algae here for us. I'll talk about the exact resources and the exact numbers of things um, during my walkthrough for Spaced Out. So. If that is out by the time you're watching this, uh, there'll be plenty of videos on that. But we still do need to track that. We need to track berry sludge because we still want to take a lot of food. And this is going to be the time where we fill up our entire refrigerator with food. So let's do that. So I'm just going to put a refrigerator. You could put it somewhere in here, but then we won't have enough space for eight duplicates. So I'm just going to put it down there. We're going to need a place to generate oxygen from the algae that we have. And we will need on the bottom level a way to filter out the carbon dioxide so mini gas pump kind of the same setup as before gas element sensor just going to go into a knot gate in your automation and then through a filter gate and then finally into your pump just to make sure that you're only pumping out carbon or rather you're only running the pump when there's enough carbon dioxide to justify it so if there's not oxygen here it'll turn on gotta have it hold for about 60 seconds and then we'll pump it out. Let's hook up the line for that. All right, let's hook up our water line really quickly here too. And again, not gonna be too scientific. We need to leave a little bit of space over here on the side though. And that's because when we wanna run our uh, water out into the surface so that we can create our liquid lock, I wanna do that here. So I'm gonna leave a, a space here that we'll fill in a little bit later. So just going to do something like this and snake it around. doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, let's see. Do I want to do it this way? Yeah, that's fine. Then we'll have it go through the toilet and out here to go out into uh, the area that we want to take it to. Or rather, the, when we want to pour it out and put it into a liquid lock. But you can't have it like this, otherwise you're just going to vent it all into space while you're flying there. So it's a good idea to just disconnect it somewhere and then reconnect it when you get there. We also need to hook up our water line to start running water out here, so let's do that. Uh, looks like it's got one right here. Let's deconstruct all this. Yeah. We'll snipping tool it right there. There, that should work. And again, this might melt or turn into steam or something like that, so ceramic is a pretty good option here. Uh, yeah, just be aware of that. 
Why does this need a repair? Oh, all my steam is starting to leak out. I'm going to turn off my pumps. So, my duplicates will get the water flowing here in just a second. Uh, actually, uh, everything is on auto build. It should be flowing already. Yeah, okay, there we go. Cool. So, we have this. Let's get our great hall set up. That's going to be kind of the last part of this build. And in order to have a great hall that serves everyone, you're going to need enough uh, mess tables for everybody to use. So, this ought to take up eight of them. There you go. Eight wide. We also still need a couple things to make this into a great hall. So first of all, we need some kind of recreation building. And the cheapest one is always the water cooler. Just make sure to disable it so your duplicates aren't drinking any water that you don't want them to drink. And we need some kind of decor item. Uh, one of the easiest things, if you have access to this, is going to be a pot that hangs from the ceiling. You could just use a regular one too, it doesn't really matter. And then uh, like Joya Seed. Joya Seeds are really good for this only because they have a huge temperature range they can tolerate. Let's fill up our fridge to get all of our food out here. That ought to do it. And then let's start sweeping all the stuff that uh, duplicates need to bring on the mission with us. Um, this is going to be all kinds of stuff. It'll be metal, it'll be steel and plastic and all kinds of things that you're going to need when you get there. So we'll sweep out enough until we have a good amount of algae. If I'm remembering right off the top of my head, I want to say it's like 15 tons of algae. Maybe more for the first time you go. Uh, maybe like 20. But the, the planet that we go to first... Um, get into my star map when the game will let me. Uh, this one will regularly have oxalite showers, so we will just get a free oxygen source eventually, but we will need to live out of our rocket for just a little bit when we get there. Alright, what is this not like? Oh, I don't have power yet. Let's do that. So power, pretty straightforward. All we need to do is just put a plug here on the side. As long as we have our batteries and solar panels on the outside, this ought to be fine. And again, we're really not spending a lot of power. It's just enough to create an oxygen and send out the carbon dioxide. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Anybody that's in here will eat in the Great Hall. They'll still eat a decent food quality with the berry sludge. And the automatic dispenser should stop taking my duplicate's attention here, but we should have plenty of algae. I'll stop requesting just for the sake of it, but the exact numbers and the exact supplies you want to take with you, I'll talk about uh, during my walkthrough for sure. Since we're only going to send one duplicate here, I will probably um, only... If you were going to send all eight of them, I would definitely want to take 100 kilograms. Let's just take 10, just because we're only going to send one, and this is just for an example. Um, and I need to wait for my water tank to fill up here. So as soon as it fills up, and as soon as my duplicates bring me enough berry sludge, uh, we'll launch this one with just one person, just knowing that we could easily hold eight. So I'll just edit on another part here in just a sec. Okay, let's assign Amari, who's going to be our pilot for this one. Let's make sure we're all good on the interior. We got enough food and algae. Just going to pretend that we're taking eight duplicates here. Uh, let's change our destination, which is... This is going to be as if we were flying over here for the first time to settle, so... That'll be that. Uh, yeah. Let's get this thing launched so we can get the nice satisfaction of launching this thing. And proving out that they can kind of stay out there for a while. Alright, Amari, have fun. And there you go. Simple colonization rocket. We'll make a few more, uh, and probably with a different engine type, but there's a bunch of different configurations you can do. Uh, let's jump over to the next rocket, though. Alright, here's our mining rocket. Um, this is really just gonna be one with a big room, and only one duplicate needs to go in this rocket, because this would be if you needed to go out and get more supplies. One of the most common supplies that I would go out mining for is going to be algae because that's going to be the best way to generate oxygen when you're in these rockets since the mechanism for generating them is so small and efficient. Um, so that would be one of the places I would go mining is to get more algae. So uh, yeah, all we need to do is make a place for one duplicate to live and kind of hang out for a while because they will be on that mission sometimes for a little while because it does take some time to either fill up your cargo bay or to run out of diamond on your drill cone. So yeah, let's get in there. All right, same idea as before, but we don't need to be as strict on space because we only have one duplicate. Um, I still do want the bonus for the Great Hall. And there's also another bonus that we could get to making your duplicate a lot more um, happy in this case. So I'm just gonna build it out. Whoops, went too far. Just gonna build it out a little bit like this, and I'm gonna try to save enough space for a bed 
and for a bathroom. So let's take a look at the stats for the bathroom and see how big we need to make this. 12 tiles. So we can get the extra morale just from that. So it looks like I misplaced this by one. So, oh no, that was right. Just kidding. Uh -huh. Then we're just going to need a door right here that we can keep open. And then a sink. Uh, so we're just going to drop a sink in here like that. And you can store your water in your great hall still, and you st should be fine. It shouldn't, like, uh, make the room bonus a problem. You also don't need to send it back out into uh, space or into the other planet you're going to land on, because this is just going to be for mining. So, just going to create something like this. Same thing as before with the setup for the great hall. Let's make sure we're good on space. Oh, we still need to put the ceiling on out of our lead. So let's check how small it is after that. Still says 46. Come on, update. Okay, there we go. 34. Yeah, so we still have a, a good amount of room. Since we only need to take one duplicate, we can put a couple of things in here that will help save on some space. So let's do this first to make it a great haul. We need to put our mess table. Let's open the door and give them a way to get up there. We need the water cooler, which we need to not allow them to bring water to. And then inside here, we can also put our refrigerator, because that will not jeopardize our room. Let's check the stat. So it's a mess hall right now, so we still need to decor items, so we could just grab that really fast. Put this hanging pot up here, and another Joya seed, which ought to do it. And then this can definitely be our washroom, as it's set right there. Our water, um, you can take a water, a tank of water here. I usually will like to, because washing your hands will take more than normal. Um, and then the water that's going to be coming out of this... Actually, I lied. We need to move this over. Because the output of the sink needs to get sent into space. Uh, rather than any clean water. So, like that. So that when my uh, duplicate washes their hands, uh, it's not going to be a, a problem. So there we go. Or rather, I have a place to actually vent the polluted water. Alright, now, let's get our liquid reservoir in here. There we go. And then same as before, I will usually just like to snake this around only because it does offer a little bit of cooling. Um, so we might as well, actually might as well snake it around like this just to make better use of the space if we can. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's fine. There we go. That'll start filling up with water because we still should be connected to the same place. Yep, here it comes. All right, now we still need a couple of things. One is we need a module to fly it. One thing I actually don't know. Let me see if this ruins the Great Hall. I haven't tried this before yet. I, hmm, actually, it might not. I think we might be able to fly from here. Let's double check. We're also going to need our bed, which I would really like to put in here. So let's get our bed here. Just a cot. That'll just make my duplicate a little bit more happy by not having to sleep on the floor. We're also going to need the ventilation system like we've had before. So just a small gas pump. Gonna need our gas element sensor. Whoops, as I like scroll out way too far. Gonna need our filter gate. There we go. Hook it up to our automation wire. Whoa, my mouse sensitivity just went nuts. Set it to oxygen. Set this to 60, which I'm sure you're tired of seeing by now because we've done it so many times. Get that all sent out. Then we need a place or a way to generate oxygen. We also will need a place to store our algae, so we could put the storage bin in here, and I think it still will not hurt it. Um, yeah, because this wouldn't be a mess hall if that was the case, so I guess this doesn't count as industrial machinery, which is pretty funny. So let's set up how much uh, we're going to need for food. So 10. How much algae we're going to need. I still like that number for one duplicate of being around 3,000. Whoops. Let's check on our other ones to see how much they've used, by the way. Sticky's been out here for a little while. Still only used about 400 kilograms, so we're doing pretty good. There's Max filling up our fridge here. And the last thing that we need is a way to generate oxygen, which is why this is not a great haul yet. Let's get our power hooked up as well. Uh, where is this? There we go. There. So now, duplicates should be getting this in here. Why do I not have power? What's going on here? I should. Oh, there's probably so much steam that I'm not gener generating any energy right here. This is something that um, I've been thinking about doing more and more as time goes on, is just uh, to hook up your 
battery like this to one of your transformers that's nearby so that you can charge it uh, just so you can make sure that you have enough because yeah I, I'm pretty sure that the light is just not getting down there because it's getting blocked by all the steam. Yeah, there you go. So you can just kind of charge it up on your normal power grid until you leave and then it should be fine. So there we go. Uh, let's check the status of this. Yep, great haul. Got our storage bin full of algae. Let's track our resources here. All right, we got plenty. Let's make sure we're only washing our hands going one direction, which is going to be when we're leaving. And we just need to assign a duplicate to this. So, Bubbles, you're going to be flying our mining mission today. There's your rocket piloting skill for you. All right, Bubbles, let's get in here and let's get out of here. Let's change our destination really quickly just to go here. We'll mine some... Uh... Wait, what? What'd that say? Am I not filled up with steam? What's happening? Wait. Did I not just have this filled up? I don't understand what's going on. Alright, well, I guess I need to fill this up again. I don't know where all that went. I'm getting a lot of really buggy behavior from having this on sandbox, so I guess I'll just need a minute for this all to fill up. I don't understand what else would have caused that. Okay. Guess I'll fill that up. Oh, you know what? I was thinking of the last rocket. Duh. All right. Okay, give me a second for this to fill up. All right, we're gassed up. Let's send somebody somewhere. Okay, Bubble should be assigned. Let's just get her out of here. And we'll send her off on the mining mission. She'll come back to drop all of our stuff off, kind of like we did in the last video. But just going to leave her there just to see how long all of this stuff lasts. Also, make sure that once she goes in there that you remove her suit. There's no reason to... Uh, damage it. There actually is... I don't know. Wait, what? What is happening? Oh, it's where the dirty water is being vented. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it pile up like this before. That's pretty funny. Or maybe I just never noticed. But yeah, so we're just going to have Bubbles chilling uh, over there mining for quite a while. And uh, I don't remember what I was going to say. All right, whatever. Next rocket. Okay, here is our exploration rocket. Uh, this is mainly going to be to reveal tiles on the map, because it's not always going to look like this. Um, I just use some cheats to reveal everything. But uh, you'll start out in a very confined space, and you won't have many things revealed, and you got to go out and try to find these other planets later in the game. So, outside looks like this, like we talked about in the other video. Let's start building the inside, and I'm really just going to take one duplicate with me. But instead of a cartographer's module, since I have the duplicate anyway, and I, I'm pretty sure it's more efficient, uh, we're just going to put a telescope inside here. So let's start building this out. So, uh, just going to start off with the wall toilet in the same spot like we typically do. And I will put down the telescope just right next to that. Uh, we can still make a great haul out of this, so I really want to do that if I can. So I'm just going to build some tiles kind of like this over to a door and then our two tiles for the recreation building that we're going to put right here. Let's put our lead tiles up like we've done many times before. And then it's uh, there's a couple other buildings that I want to put in here because I want to double up this rocket's purpose. Most of the time um, the platform that you have over here that was used for the data bank rocket will basically be replaced for your shipping rocket. So this one can kind of double up as both since uh, this duplicate's not really going to have much else to do. And there's plenty of room inside this rocket. So I will typically double up the exploration uh, part of it and I will also have them generate data banks for me. And the best part about this is that the uh, orbital data collection lab will not cause uh, the great hall to not be a great hall still. So I'll just put it in there. Same thing goes for the actual control station. So you can put that in the room that's supposed to be the Great Hall and it should still be fine. Let's put down our mess table, our refrigerator. You can put that in there too. You can put down a storage bin, which we're going to need to store stuff. And finally, our recreational building, which is going to be... Where? Why can't I find this? Okay, here it is. So yeah, that should be it. Should still be a great haul. Oh, we still need the decoration, so let's get that too. There we go. Plant our Joya Seed in here again, which is always going to be the uh, 
thing that we'll want to use. Let's get the bottom of this fleshed out. Um, obviously, we need a way to get up there, so put that ladder there like we typically do. And in the same spot, I'll put our ventilation that's going to get rid of all the carbon dioxide. So put that there. Gas element sensor. Whoops, didn't need to go out of that menu. Not gate. Filter gate. There. Set this to oxygen. Set our filter gate to like 60 seconds. That should be good. We still need something to generate oxygen for us. So here's our oxygen diffuser. We need to hook this stuff up to power, but we'll do that in just a second. Should have a couple of extra spaces here. So I'm gonna put a bin here. I'm gonna have two separate bins because I need plastic and I need algae. So I'm just gonna have two bins in here to have them request separately. So I don't need to micromanage this every time this rocket lands and then leaves again. Ideally, when this rocket lands, my duplicate that's flying it should only be there for, I don't know, half a cycle while we get refueled. And my duplicates bring all the other stuff in here that we need. Uh, you know, our food, algae, uh, plastic. Make sure to not request too much, by the way. So it's 3,000 on plastic. Maybe a little bit more algae because this rocket is typically out for longer. So we can bump that up to like 4,000. And then we do still have room for a bed. So we can just go ahead and throw down a cot here. And that's pretty much the setup. We need to run our water here, though. And for this one, you don't really have space for a water tank unless you want to just go down to one um, bin to request stuff. And you don't really need the water that much because it's only going to be one duplicate. And this is plenty of pipe to keep this all filled up. So I'm not super worried about it. Should make sure our water lines still connect out here. And they don't. I uh, guess we could just go right through here. Sure. Okay. Then, what else are we missing? Oh, we're missing power. Let's get that. Power outlet fitting. Put our conductive wire on here. Just need to connect all the way around. Don't connect it to your fridge like we've been talking about. And once we get some uh, algae in here and we get some power going, which we're not connected to our system like we were last time. So let's charge up our batteries really quickly. I'm going to try to build this out of tungsten. I don't know if I've mentioned this as much in some of the other videos, but make sure that the materials you're using out here aren't going to melt when your rocket takes off. So obsidian for ladders, tungsten for any refined metals, or you can use steel if you have it. Uh, yeah. All right, we still need to connect up this, too, to make sure that we can send all the extra gases out. Duplicate should be getting there. Oh, make sure to disable your uh, water cooler so your duplicate isn't drinking water that we don't want them to drink. Okay, and yeah, that should be pretty much it. Let's find a duplicate to fly this thing. Uh, the duplicate that flies this, you'll want to have them also specialize in uh, astronomy and your data analysis, just so that they can work as quickly as possible in revealing those. So I think you'll also get a bonus from these too. I don't, hmm. I guess I don't actually know if that makes it research any faster. Does it say here? Yeah, I, I don't know for sure. If anybody knows, please let me know. Um, I've never tested this before. I've just kind of sent them out there. But I tend to have somebody fully specced and researched that are, is on this rocket anyway. Uh, so yeah, that'd be good to know. Oh, that's stinky. We don't want to do that. Whoops, wrong person. Camille, you're getting this. You're going on this rocket. All right. Camille is very much capable of flying this now. Let's go ahead and assign her real quick. There we go. And then let's also uh, choose a destination. So this rocket has a distance of 20 tiles, which is pretty far. Um, hitting all the way to the end of the map is just a little bit further than 10, which is a little further than you should go because you still want to be able to fly back. So you can get a lot of progress done on this in one run. Um, it also wouldn't be the worst idea to set some kind of timer for yourself. Like you could set a timer inside here to just notify you after a certain amount of time just to like recheck on this rocket because I tend to forget about this rocket a lot. Um, yeah, anyway, let me rename this really quickly and then we'll try to get Camille out of here. Exploration rocket, there. And don't disable the building. I don't know why it does that, it drives me nuts. All right, duplicates are gonna take just a little bit to get all this stuff in here, so I guess I won't make everybody wait. I'll just come back and we'll launch this thing in just a second. 
All right, I think we're pretty much ready for this one. Let's just make sure we track all of our resources that we need to. So algae, plastic, and berry sludge. Not bear tea. There we go. All right, we got all the stuff we expect. Camille, let's go. Oh, I guess I need to... Yeah, all right. Let me begin this launch sequence so that Camille can actually get out of here. Not gonna be using some debug sequence. I've had so many problems with that, uh, just causing crashes even though we've just been in a testing environment, so that's kind of a bummer. All right, so now that Camille's in here, unequip the suit. And it, it says area complete right now. It doesn't matter where you put the telescope in here, as far as I can tell. I think you can put it anywhere and it will still work. So if there were tiles to reveal, Camille would just be chilling uh, on that and be trying to uh, reveal some nearby tiles. But yeah, everything's already revealed. What you probably want to do too is make sure that they're prioritizing this over uh, creating databanks because while they're out here, if there's nothing left to explore or they're traveling to and from their destination, we might as well have them making databanks while they're there. So kind of doubles up as it, but that's the idea for your exploration rocket. So yeah, uh, let's start the next one. All right, here's the next rocket, which I like to just call like the deep space colonization rocket. I was mentioning earlier that you should be able to get everywhere that you need to go with a steam rocket, but this one can go just a little bit further. And this was something that I didn't mention in the exteriors video. I've actually modified this exterior just a little bit because you can fit a second rovers module on here or a second trailblazers module. Uh, I also put an artifact module in here too, so like if we're going to settle on one of these really far planets, we could probably stop off and grab an artifact on our way. Uh, you could also get a second artifact if you wanted to replace one of the solar panels too, so a little bit of flexibility with this, and that's one of the nice things about the hydrogen rocket, so let's start building the inside. Any of these later game colonization missions, I'm going to take only four duplicates instead of eight. So we're going to be a little bit less crowded, but that'll also let us get one more room. So the one more room that we can get is the same one that we had in a different rocket. It's just another bathroom. We should be able to fit everything else in there. So let's get started on that. I'm going to put a wall toilet and a sink here, just like normal. Then reserve enough space for our bathroom, which should just be this. I'm also pretty sure that we could put a bin inside here, which is something that I should have done in that other rocket. I don't think that's going to make this not be the room that we want it to be, so let's double check. Yeah, still a washroom. Cool. So we can just go ahead and sneak that in there too if we want uh, an extra thing for holding any of our supplies. Now up here, uh, like usual, you can move your uh, water tank up here, so I'm just going to put that there. Uh, we could probably put it here, I guess, or I could just put it over there. Um, we do need a vent. This is going to be a little bit weird if we have a bathroom in here and if we get to the other place, because we're going to need to vent all of our polluted water out from our sink. Although, if here's another thing that we could potentially test. I could probably just disable this sink and still get the bonus of the washroom, but if you don't want to do that and you want to protect yourself from food poisoning germs, I think we can just do something like this. We'll leave a little bit of space for the uh, pipe to run that's going to be draining all of our polluted water. Like that. Then when we land, we'll disable the sink and we'll disconnect this so that we can use our uh, water in the tank to create a water lock when we land. So yeah, you can have that. Uh, you're also going to need the module to allow you to drive the rocket. So rocket control station. And then the remainder of the space, you could just put the um, mess tables so that all of them get the benefit from the Great Hall. Same thing as usual, just going to place our station here that's going to, or rather our furniture. It's just going to make this a Great Hall. So disable that. Go ahead and put a ladder here. Whoops, misclicked. Same thing as usual, we just need our typical refrigerator. We're going to need uh, a way to create oxygen, so let's go ahead and put that down. Fridge here. Can't quite fit the fridge up here, unfortunately, but still fine. Small route to go. Need our oxygen diffuser. We need a way to have some ventilation. And I think we can fit a second bin here. I'm trying to think if there's anything that I'm forgetting. I guess we'll find out. 
We need to track our resources here, so algae. Plastic. Berry sludge. There we go. Let's get our power hooked up here too. There. Let's get our roof on so we can protect our duplicants from radiation as they're flying. Once again, just kind of snake it through here. That ought to be totally fine. Then we can also just kind of snake it back down. Actually, probably do something like this. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but, you know, might as well try to make it perfect if we can. All right, there we go. Gonna start filling this up with water so we have enough water for everything that we need to do when we colonize. This is both water. I guess I'll just send it down from here. All right, and our supplies that we need. Oh, I don't even need a second bin. Why am I worried about this? All we need here is algae. Oh, that's why. It's because we need to um, ship everything in here that we expect. So this again is expected to... Uh, and let me unpower this, by the way. And I want this right by the door, just because if my duplicates are gonna be loading this over and over, I'd rather that they do it pretty quickly. So let me get that out of the way. We don't need to power that. We might as well not waste power on it. It's like, oh, it's being blocked by something, that's why. Set up our filters here. Need to put our automation in really quickly, because we forgot that. There we go. Set that to 60. We also need to make sure to charge our batteries before we go, which is not connected right now. Just need to get it up there a little bit further. Now we can charge up our batteries. Everything inside should be working. We also need the last thing to make this a great haul. So I'm going in like no particular order here. We've seen this many times. If you don't have your Joya Seeds, uh, you can use some other things. So like one thing that's going to be within the temperature range you'll usually have in here is a Mirth Leaf Seed. So I'm going to just use that. Gonna ask for a lot of food, because if we're settling on another planet, I'm just gonna max out this fridge. So, gonna do that. Let's hook up our gas pipe once again. There we go. And then anything we might want to sweep in here. Uh, I've just been targeting algae, because we definitely will need it. There's gonna be a ton of other supplies, like I mentioned, so... Yeah, just gonna repeat myself and say that that's gonna be in the uh, walkthrough videos that we do, so... That'll be available there. All right. Let's wait for everything to get filled up. Oh, we don't need plastic here. Why do I have that on there? Let's wait for everything to get filled up, and then we will send a duplicate out. But we're just going to pretend that we have four here, because this will easily support four of them. So, yeah. Give me just a second for this all to fill up. All right. Let's pretend we have enough algae for our trip. I would normally do about 10 to 15 tons, depending on how many people we're going to be going and what the planet looked like. But... For one duplicate, which is all we're going to use, for example, here. This is totally more than enough. And yeah, I guess this happens every time. I don't know why I don't remember ever seeing this before, but I guess, I don't know. Maybe I've never had a sink on a rocket before. Hmm. All right. So let's get somebody assigned here. Who's going to be going? How about Ellie? And Ellie, we need to select a destination here. We'll just pretend that we're landing on the magma planet, sure. But we're going to stop along our way at the organic mass field to pick up the artifact. So I guess we'll just go there, we'll fill this up, and then when we're at the other place, when we settle, we can uh, just, ex I guess, examine it and get the credit for it. So, yeah. All right, Ellie, let's go. Launch checklist incomplete. Why can I not reach any of the modules? Huh? I'm confused. Uh... I don't know why nobody can reach this. Alright, well, I'll figure it out. We'll get it launched. I'll just come back with the next rocket. I don't know what's happening. This is so glitchy with all these cheats on. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, I'm a, a derp and forgot to change my crew, so Ellie's in there. There we go. Ellie off to colonize a new planet all by herself. Okay, uh, the last two rockets, I'm just going to build the exteriors again really quickly just to mention them. The last two rockets are really just going to be for supporting 
uh, other colonies. So like sending out bots to start pre-digging this one out, which is kind of a, a big pain to send duplicates there and expect them to do all the work. Or if it's going to be like a long range shipping rocket. But they will all have the same interior as your mining rocket because there's only really one duplicate to send. So they're all going to look pretty much like this and I don't want to rebuild this twice because I think you get the point of how to build this one. Uh, but I'll at least build the exterior so you can kind of see the combination of what they would look like. And then we'll just kind of copy paste what's in here into the other rocket really quickly. So yeah, I'll get that done and be right back. All right, here's the last two rockets. I just kind of called these my site prep and long range shipping rockets. Uh, this is just going to be for when, when we need to send a lot of bots out or when we need to ship a lot of stuff all at once and we can't wait on our interplanetary launcher or it's a really long distance to ship something to. So yeah, but like I mentioned, the interiors of these are going to be almost exactly the same as the mining rocket, if not exactly the same. So yeah, spot the differences. They're all the same thing. Uh, but yeah, that's all you need if this is just a one-man uh, staff, basically. We can just send this out and they should be totally happy being out there and doing the job that we need them to do. So let's just launch two of these at the same time and that'll be pretty much the end of it. So yeah, let's get a crew assigned really quickly. First of all, uh, Liera and, whoops, wrong one, May. You are the last two pilots. Change crew, that is. Lyra here. May here. And we'll just kind of go... This has a distance of 16 tiles, so if I needed to ship something... What is happening? I have never seen that before. Okay. Hmm. So if I needed to ship something or if I needed to drop some stuff off, uh, this should get close enough to deploy. Uh, at least the uh, shipping payload. If you need to get closer or go any further, um, the other option that you can do with these rockets is you can go further than you're allowed to and then kind of fly close back to where you want to land. What is happening with these? Man, there's so many bugs going on. Okay, whatever. But you can go all the way there and then fly back and kind of get close enough and then if you abandon ship, all of the supplies and your duplicate will just kind of rain down on the planet. Then you can collect it that way if you can't get quite all the way there. You could also add more fuel tanks here, but the more fuel tanks you add, the less stuff you can take. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. Um, yeah, but that can be really handy. The other thing you could do if you are really uh, feeling adventurous... <laughs> Every time I come out here, it's worse. If you're really feeling adventurous, what you could do is you could fly to this asteroid and refuel. Like if you were able to ship yourself some fuel, you could refuel there after you landed and then sent back out here. What is happening? I Okay, I don't understand what's going on. Anyway, let's get these things launched. That one has a destination. This one, I don't know. We're going to start sending bots there. Sure, why not? All right, I think we should be good. Acknowledge warnings and launch. Yeah, it's just complaining we don't have any cargo in this yet, but I don't want to wait for my duplicates to do all that. They're way too slow. And then after we launch these two, we'll kind of just review all the other rockets and uh, see how everybody's been doing during the time we've been building all this. There we go. There's one. There's two. Come on, May. Nice. And then I'm going to make them take their suits off. One thing that I mentioned is make sure you put their suits back on when you're heading back, just so that they don't get burnt when they're out in your rocket launching area, because that's going to be very hot. So site prep rocket, we need to let Liera take the suit off. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look at all of our rockets and see how they're doing out there. So data bank was first. Stinky's out here. Supplies are still looking pretty good. He's been out here for a long time. So many data banks he's made, by the way. Yeah, 316, that's pretty good. All right, cool. Next was our shipping rocket. Abe's out here, just minding his own business. Getting a little low on algae and food, but doing okay. Artifact rocket. Yep, Ada is about the same. Let's see, colonization rocket one, I think, was next. Here's Amari. Doing totally fine. Let's check out, let's see, what was after this one? Let me look at my notes. Uh, mining rocket, that's right. Here's Bubbles. 
Chilling out here. Totally good on supplies. Exploration rocket. It's going to be, uh, yeah, just one of them. So, yeah, the supplies are still pretty good out here, too. So Camille could stay out here for a long time if we needed to. Uh, let's see. The long-range colonization rocket. We just sent that. And we also just sent the long-range shipping and the site prep rocket. So that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. This was a long video and a long series. But hopefully you'll have a good idea of when you need to start getting out on the map and spaced out. How you can build your launching platform, how you can build the outside of the rockets, and finally how you can build the inside of the rockets to kind of do every job you would need. One thing I didn't quite cover is eventually you'll need to breach the temporal tear if you want to beat the game. You can just send a hydrogen rocket here. It should reach it totally fine. Or you could send a petroleum rocket here. I'm not really going to cover that because there's not a whole lot you need to do other than just get there. <laughs> Whatever my asteroids are doing here, that's a good thing to leave off on. There you go. You're getting a bouncy asteroid here. There's a big earthquake that's shaking the whole thing. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you back here soon.